what is memoir writing? A lot of people get it uh, confused with autobiography because the um, genres are really close. We think of autobiography as really the parent and memoir the child. Memoir is more a slice of life where autobiography is from cradle to grave. So a lot of people uh, write their autobiographies. They really research it. They do a lot of fact checking. Um, they use a lot of documents in general to create the piece. Where in memoir writing, it goes the full gambit. As I learned on this project, I had no idea. I thought memoirs were more narrative, long form genre. And I was really surprised to find out how many different styles there were. Um, I read every one, as Gary was mentioned, quite a range of people. I don't even have all the examples here. I um, did 12 memoirs, actually, my contextual analysis. Everyone from David Douglas Duncan, who was a photojournalist for Life magazine and National Geographic. He's uh, over three decades of photojournalism. I studied his memoir. Um, Eminem, I mean, that was a great find. Um, Laurie Nataro, as many of you have heard about, all comedic writing. And uh, one of the big surprises, too, was that Jamie Lee Curtis wrote a memoir of which is four years old. So I never thought about, again, memoir as a children's book. So it was really a nice surprise to find out how many different styles that went from diary of style, investigative, short stories, scrapbook, journalism journalistic style. Um, one of the uh, really, I think, challenging things in memoir is, is whether, how much fact to put in and how much can they fictionalize. I mean, think of it as a continuum with the factual writing on one end and completely made up versions on the other end, like Margaret Seltzer um, did, where she completely made up everything. Um, I think most memoirs pretty much fall in the middle. Some more probably heavier on the uh, autobiographical side of the fact checking. Um, I think what really brought the fact or fiction component into everyone's awareness was the scandal over James Fry's A Million Little Pieces. That received so much media attention. And I think that's when people started questioning, well, wait a minute, are we verifying these truths? Are we looking at it as a story? Or are we looking at it as you know, a real journalistic account? And there was so much controversy over his piece that a lot of other writers started questioning you know, how much is allowed and how much isn't allowed. And I think the final kind of conclusion to all that was something that William Zinzer said, um, that he feels it's about the intention. And I think that really goes hand in hand. If you intentionally write a piece of fiction, market it as memoir, that, I think, is totally unethical, where if you write a piece and you're using, you're changing people's names, or maybe what they wore, or you're remembering, well, let me say it was a spring day, you know, when you know, well, maybe it was really the end of May, um, and you're using creative license, I think that's another thing. Some people put disclaimers in their books, other ones don't. Some people feel the reader should be able to judge what is truth and what isn't truth. Or I know when I read A Million Little Pieces, I kept thinking, how could this guy have done all these things in one month? I mean, he was supposed to be in a 28-day program. So I kept thinking, first of all, a lot of things he was saying he did wouldn't be allowed in the rehab facility. And then also, over such a short period of time. So I questioned the um, truth in that book while I was reading it. But it didn't matter to me. I mean, I liked it for the story. So I think everyone goes into what their, you know, their attitude toward what they're reading with a different outlook. Um, another thing that I discovered, really, that was really interesting was how to write memoirs. And some people, as Gary suggested to me, to do free writing. And that's what really enabled me to create the piece, Don't Go, that mini memoir was that all came about through free writing. So that was one great idea. It was certainly supported by other texts that I read on how to write memoirs. Um, another thing that I absolutely didn't know anything about was a suggestion from one of the writers to write about the times. So if I were going to write about, say, the year my daughter was born, 
I could look up old newspapers from that year, magazines, and find some bits of information about who was president, what was going on with the economy, whatever, write all that information down at the Times, and then I could pull that information into the memoir about her life, and that would sort of give me material or kind of support it and give it a feel for the time. Um, Oh, another idea that came about that I was surprised about and I learned about was if you take a photograph of someone, again, just using my daughter as an example since she's right here, um, I could write about a conversation that I had with her, then write a conversation that maybe a friend of hers would have with her and maybe another relative would have with her. And that way I could use that voice or that tone into the piece that I'm writing about her. So that if I talk about, oh, she was at her friend's house and this happened, I'd already have sort of a feel of what that conversation would be like or what that event would be like because I isolated that scenario beforehand before I melded it into the project. Um, and getting into my project, after I studied so much about other people's writings, which I was really pleasantly surprised to see so many styles. That was the biggest thing. Um, so I started getting into my writing, and the first thing I did was draw from course assignments and things that happened during the school year, because as a few of you know, I did write some other stories that weren't assignments, but they were a reflection of what was happening while I was here. And I started putting those together, and I know it was Rebecca that I first started thinking about the title, Rabies and Honey. And um, that's a collection of short stories. I think the thing I really uh, would do differently with this book is to make them all the same theme. Most of them are humorous, so you know, kind of have a comedic flair to them. I think that's what I would do is either make them all humorous or all really like emotional, emotion-driven kind of pieces, or have all similar theme. So if you look at books, say, like Lori Nataro, hers are all funny. Or Chelsea Handler's, they're all really funny. So I could see doing that with Rabies and Honey and really kind of uniting that where I have more of a, I call it patchwork of memoirs because that's what it is. It's really a sampler of various styles. And because I did have a sampler of various styles in there, some of the way I formatted the text changes from story to story and I think to have it in one book it'd be nice to have that layout more uniform because I have the same similar style in um, so that's how that book came about and then in don't go what came about with that was the free writing exercise that Gary had suggested and I just start sat down you know my house Saturday morning just started typing, 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 and after doing that, really only a couple of times for like say good ten hour blocks of time each, I just started reworking it, and I just started moving things around. So I wasn't actually doing that initial writing; it was more about revision, and I just continually moved things around and started to meld things together. And one thing that I would do differently with that book is um, my intention was to challenge myself to see if I could write one long narrative, just one really long continuous piece, which I never thought I could do. I was like, how can I do that? I have no idea. So I just started doing the free writing, putting it together, but as episodes. So each little section is an episode, which actually Jim Mullen's book, um, Takes the Village Idiot, his has episodes, and it goes from the, <laughs> from the beginning to the end in his life. So his has a chronological order, but they're all these little episodes, and they're not necessarily connected. My goal with Don't Go was to connect them. And I kept working toward that, um, but I still have you know the episodes broken up. So I think I would just keep exploring that and seeing if it would grow into one long narrative or if it would continue to remain episodic. Um, I think the writing, as any artist knows, is the process that leads us. So you may have a plan, a narrative plan, when you go into it, but sometimes the writing 
um, leads us to where it ends up. In um, Girl Builds House, A Virtual Journey Through Real Life, that was a real experiment that I thought of last year. And I just kept working on it, even though I didn't know if I really had it done for this. But I still worked on it. And fortunately, I was able to put together enough of a draft to present it. My idea was to blog what was happening in my life about building a house. And in the same way that people would journal what's going on in their life, or use a diary for what's happening. And um, I just kept, you know, blogging and putting all these great visuals. And the whole time, I'm picturing the book and the layout of the book would have a blog format, as you see here, and then have a sidebars on the layout with all the text, just like you see in my presentation log. I wanted to have documents all down the one side, just like this. But when I started doing the layout, there was just so much white space. <laughs> it was like, what do you do with all this white space? So in a book, and I thought, oh my gosh, am I going to include all of this, the post of my tree for the title? It just seemed like that layout might not really be as effective in publishing as I hoped. So I did play around with that some in Girl Builds House. You can see sections of the pages that do have the sidebar. But I started melting it more in a scrapbook style, like M&M's. Um, when I saw his book, I think I had the most, or the first encouragement about making a visual piece. Mm. So I am an artist, and you know the visuals really excited me. I thought, wow, I never thought of a memoir having like so many pictures in it, you know? So I just started really exploring that and came out with uh, Girl Builds House. That really took a very long time, that book. If you look at it, the layout was so involved that um, I could see taking another year just to really get the layout in that. And I did do it all in Word, which is pretty amazing. I started messing around with Word, and there were a lot of features in it that I had never used before, like tables. I was able to create a lot in tables. And also, in the clip art, I just started experimenting to see if I could find things as I did in PowerPoint, and I was able to do that. So I was surprised how much layout I could actually do with Word. And then the covers I created in PowerPoint, and uh, they're actually PowerPoint slides that I had printed. Uh, one of the big things that happened with the Girl Builds House, too, that surprised me was when you read a blog, you might read the one post like today, like say, oh, I went to school today and this event happened. And then three days later, you might say, oh, yeah, I was back at school and now this other thing happened. And then next week, you're like, well, at school, I ran into so and so. Well, in a blog, it works fine because you're reading other websites, you're reading other blogs, you're going about your life, you're seeing other friends, speaking on the phone. So it's sort of like this next episode, oh, what's happening next on the blog? But when you put all those little posts together as a narrative, you're repeating it over and over and over, back to back, as the reader's sitting there reading one piece of text. So I found that I would have to really edit a lot more than I thought of the text to keep it interesting. Um, you know, where was the drama? Where was the excitement? You know, and then it started to become these little mini stories. And uh, so in some parts you can see where, oh, it's like one mini story, one mini story, one mini story. But my intention was that when I cut and pasted the blog into Word, I was already going to have my text already. So I was really surprised to find out that it didn't read the same way as when you read the blog, you know, from over the course of a year. Now I'm sitting down in a day afternoon reading the book. So there were many things that I was like, oh my god, I could take out like these big chunks, you know, or rearrange it. And then I started wondering, well, do I need transitions? Like you would transition from a paragraph to a paragraph or chapter to chapter. But with blog posts, you don't use that type of writing. So then it started, you know, I started questioning, like, oh, am I going to transition now? Um, you know, what am I going to do about that? But my whole idea with, with it was to make it a digital memoir and uh, to bring that to paper. Because I think that's what people do with blogs. Um, 
and we share a lot of information that's personal and we use different names on blogs and that's one thing that a lot of memoirs do also is they use the pseudonyms for themselves and that's you know what I was doing in the memoir also. So that was another commonality and the visual pieces too. So I did start to change it. I'm not sure how much my blog in a book idea could work. Um, I'm thinking about one other blog that I read that um, it's my sister's blog <laughs> that she makes many stories. Hers are actually really long. She could like she'll fill a whole post like that. She's got many stories. So I could see where she could pull out all the light stories and put those in a book in, in that way it would work. So I think for um, some of the, just a couple of the style things that I just wanted to kind of back up to that I found was pretty interesting. Um, this goes completely the other direction of what I expected to discover.
in conclusion, really this whole project turned out to be a great experiment. You know, I thought I, was, I knew what I was going in for when I started it, and I was so excited with all the um, interesting things that surprised me along that journey. And I recommend memoir writing or reading actually to everyone because there's so many different styles that if you like, you know, children's book, just really illustrated, simple, quick memoir reading. There's Jamie Lee Curtis's, you know, she probably has a hundred words in the whole book about her four-year-old memoir, like comedy, Chelsea Handler. And then if you want something, you know, that's much more serious, there's Night of the Gun. Or someone actually, M&M's is actually really a fact check type memoir, surprisingly, because there are a lot of documents in there. And because he is well known, um, the information about his life is so public. So I encourage all of you to read memoirs.